my starting point tonight is that people like to buy all sorts of stuff. And nowadays, people like to buy stuff with Bitcoin more and more. This is problematic, especially in the Bitcoin setting, because they might be buying things from parties they cannot trust. So there should be a system that guarantees people who purchasers um, that their payment is going through only if they receive what they want, and vice versa for the sellers. Someone a few years ago noticed this market need and devised a solution for this. And this system was very successful for a long time and was selling all sorts of stuff until it was shut down a few years ago. Uh, today, however, I'm going to start from diff different assumptions. I want to tell you how we can have this sort of fair exchange, fair payments on Bitcoin without explicit escrow, without explicit trusted party. And we're going to talk about digital goods, songs, theorems, or solutions for Sudokus. So let's start from how do you buy a Sudoku solution with Bitcoin in a fair manner? And there is an official solution, sort of, from the Bitcoin community that was presented in Financial Crypto in 2016. And sort of, see, this is a fair exchange problem, and uses the blockchain as the trusted party in this context. And it will work in the following manner. So the seller will take the Sudoku solution and will encrypt it, send it to you, and then also prove to you in zero knowledge that the ciphertext actually contains the proof. Now, you're convinced that this thing you got contains the Sudoku solution. All you need is the key. You could make a transaction that says, blockchain, please do pay this seller as soon as he provides the key. Unfortunately, in the Bitcoin context, this is too complex for the, script, for the scripting language in the Bitcoin. So we have to do something a little different, but on those lines. In addition to what the seller sold you, it should also give you a SHA of the key and extend the proof to say this key is related in such and such manner. And now you can say blockchain. Pay the seller if he provides the pre-image of this string. I know it's going to work. The seller just sends the key, and everybody's happy. And the guy can use the transaction at this point, the seller. Let's look at one thing, though. The proof over there is a zero-knowledge snark in this proposition uh, from the Bitcoin community. That means that somewhere there should be a common reference string generated by trusted party. Who generates the string in this context? It's the buyer. And this sounds sort of problematic. The intuition from the authors was that the seller could cheat, and the buyer, if he were generating it, wouldn't break at zero knowledge. There's been discussion back and forth and we wanted to settle the matter. So there is an attack one can do on Libsnark so that one can generate specific malicious CRS, receive a proof, and learn and get part of the witness from the proof in Libsnark. So I can learn part of the Sudoku solution, say one cell somewhere, without paying you. So moral of the story, Look at the CRS, get it from a trusted party, don't do it just as it is. Another question I want to tell you about is, what can you buy with this protocol? Digital goods, yes, but I'm going to submit to you that there's things I'm going to call services that you cannot buy. What do you mean with services? Think of a cloud setting. So, for example, you want to uh, pay your cloud every month. If you, at the end of the month, you check that they're actually storing your data properly or they're actually storing your data in an encrypted manner. We have protocols to check these two properties, but you can think of all sorts of auditing context. Did you find my taxes correctly? Did you submit my homework? Why doesn't the old protocol work? So let's take the file, the filing taxes example. And let's assume a trusted CRS. The seller in the old protocol will send you ciphertext of a witness, some evidence, of the fact that the taxes were filed. So, for example, a shipping receipt and whatnot. Then it will prove to you that this ciphertext contains this evidence. But now you have proof that the ciphertext contains proof that the service was done. You're done. You don't, that's all you need to know. You just walk away. So, in other words, we designed and implemented the protocol that solves this problem. Uh, we call them service contingent service payments. And we stumbled upon another thing in that context. We needed a SHA circuit implementation. And we built 
uh, implementation of SHA-256 that seems to be the most efficient available. To the best of our knowledge, the previous best implementation was by Bristol University from Nigel's Smart Lab. So if you're interested in this or any of the things I talked about, you can check out at these links over here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>